Welcome everyone. My name is Candace Cordelia coming to you via Pro Wrestling Illustrated, my first interview with PWI, and it's with none other than Jazzy Gabbard. How are you, Jazzy? Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank of you. Course. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm feeling so much better. And thank you so much for being here with me virtually. I wish this could be in person, but this is the next best thing. <laughs> And I love yeah. your background. It's so peaceful, so calming. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's all about the nature, you know, like since we have the corona and the pandemic going on, like um, me and my friends, we figured out it's more about going to the inside, you know, and then finding um, happiness and gratefulness, like just from the inside, you know, and nature is a big part of life. And we should really appreciate it and not take it for granted. Like these little fellas, they give us oxygen. So we should really keep them around. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I really vibe with that, Jazzy. And that's something that myself and your fans have. One of the main things that we've latched on to getting to know you and your journey as a wrestler and beyond is that you seem to have a very calming spirit and nature, and you seem to be very in tune with the world around you, um, which seems, it, it seems a little bit different considering, you know, the world of wrestling, you don't really think nature or calming <laughs> at all. It seems to be the complete opposite. So yeah. tell us first about your journey into wrestling. How did that start for you? Yeah, it, it wasn't always like that. I was a wild child. Like I was a troublemaker, you know, like um, I had crazy times. Like I had I had everything, you know, like I had even like living on the streets, and, you know, never the drugs, never the alcohol, but I know a lot of people who did, you know, and I always needed something like something was missing. Um, I don't have um, like actual family and stuff. So that was always missing and I was always searching and I had crazy things, you know, um, and then I finally went to Japan, like when my real wrestling journey started. And there I found private also like, you know, happiness. Like I went to different um, temples and I prayed there because I have to say, and a lot of people don't really understand the wrestling time in Japan was so difficult. It was so painful and I was um, nervous all the time and I couldn't speak the language and I was always a foreigner so it was a really difficult time you know and now in Stardom and in other Japanese companies there are a lot of foreigners but when I joined in 2012 um, there weren't any foreigners so it was only me so yeah I needed to find something where I could find peace and I found peace with spirituality uh, and I followed this now and now I'm this peaceful kind of being I am today so it's a long journey I mean I'm in the wrestling business since 20 years and I was I don't know some people know when I started wrestling I was this little tiny insecure girl and now I'm this huge uh, giant monstrous uh, wrestler so it was both like physically from the outside but also from the inside it was a exciting journey Wow. And it's a complete 360. And Japan, I mean, who encouraged that move? Was that something that you decided to do on a whim? I'm just going to go to Japan to learn from the best. Or was there a particular person that wanted you to go? Well, actually, I never wanted to go to Japan. I watched the documentary Gaya Girls and it was so scary. Uh, I don't know. Did you watch the, the documentary? I've heard of it, but now I'm going to watch it because it <laughs> you have to watch it. It's so scary. There was this one girl, she wanted to become a wrestler and she got like beat up like brutally. And she had to do like thousand squats, thousand steps and all these crazy things. So it was never an aspiration for me because I was never really a sporty girl. You know, it just came with the time. But when I started wrestling, I was more like entertaining. You know, I did like sexy moves <laughs> And dancing to the ring and stuff um and i like i i'm born i'm born in germany and in germany the wrestling business wasn't that that big so i had to go to the uk because in the uk there's a lot of wrestling so i moved to london and, and i worked for pro wrestling eve it's an all-female company and they had to bring over the japanese people and there was a talent scout um watching us on that show and they found me very interesting. And they were asking me, do you want to come to Japan? 
Um, but again, it was never on my mind, but I, you know, I took the chance. So in 2012, I went over there and rest is history. So yeah, it was, it was pro wrestling Eve that made the step that I could get, go there. That's awesome. And pro wrestling Eve has blown up tremendously. A lot of amazing wrestlers have come from pro wrestling Eve and still wrestle for them. And in terms of Japan itself, it sounds like you didn't know a lick of Japanese going over there, I assume. Uh, sorry, say again. That's okay. It sounds as though you didn't know any Japanese at all, or did you know a little? No, no, not at all. Like um, they told me, "Hey, can you? Do you want to come to Japan?" Then I had first. It was like a two weeks tour, so kind of they wanted to test me, um, and of course I had to test out if it's fun and everything. Um, and then I went back, and then I had like a one month break or something, and then they asked me to come for three months. So in these two months break, uh, I learned Japanese as good as I could, and I read about you know everything because there's a lot of do's and don'ts. Like for example, with the shoes, you don't go with shoes into um, the house, or you don't do the handshake, you only bow down, you know, and stuff like that, you know. And I wanted to be prepared as good as possible to not make any mistakes. Um, and yeah. <laughs> wow. What was the most memorable thing uh, that you can recall during your time in Japan? Oh, there's a lot, but <laughs> there's a fun story I didn't told before. Um, I actually made a big mistake when I went to, to the first after show party uh, in Japan. So there was the sponsor, right? And the sponsor, he was like a big guy and he gave all the presents to the girls and he felt like, you know, the alpha male. And <laughs> there was like a gym equipment thing. You like, you bend and it's really difficult to bend. Like it's really you have to be strong to bend it and he was sitting there you know with his gold chain and everything and he was bending it you know and like showing everyone off that he's like the strongest and then actually Kyrie, Kyrie saying you know from WWE she came over to me and she handed this thing to me and she said Jazzy can you bend it and I'm like of course <laughs> Was that easily <laughs> and he was so angry at me he was so mad <laughs> he wanted to kick me out and everything and like every time when we had like an after show party and he was around he, he was so mad at me but I didn't know you know I should have said mm, I can't but well <laughs> I am strong I show you that I'm strong Exactly. And that's hilarious. You know, oh, well, it's a male ego. What are you going to do? You, you do what you do. <laughs> right. You bent the stick and you move on. <laughs> so, and now, you know, a lot of your fans remember you mostly from your time in WWE, obviously. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I personally remember seeing you for the first time on that stage and just being like, who is this woman? I've never seen. I mean, I was pretty new to wrestling. But just based on mm -hmm. the other women that I've seen before, uh, prior, it, you just stood out. You were very memorable. You stood out mm -hmm. and made a huge impression. So talk to us about just your time in WWE. I know you you stated this in other interviews, but looking back at it now in 2021, was there anything that really sticks out to you now versus, you know, the time when you left the company? Um, well, I will always remember and cherish my time in at the May Young Classic. Like that was the greatest time of my life. And looking back now, I should have stopped there. You know, I should never have went to NXT UK. That's just the truth. Because now I have like a bittersweet memory of WWE. Uh, I love the May Young Classic. It was professional. Everyone was super sweet, super nice. Uh, I loved my match. I loved the fans. Everything was cool. Um, but then going to NXT UK, well, it is what it is. Uh, I have not good memories about it. And it's really a shame. And I try to let it go, you know, just mm -hmm. to say, well, it wasn't meant for me. But of course, it's again, bittersweet. I'm thinking sometimes, should I have done something different? You know, should I have stood more up for myself? Um, well, well, yeah, I remember May Young Classic as the perfect night for myself. Yes, yes. And we remember you in May Young Classic. It, it's still to this day. And is there anyone at NXT UK that you, you still keep in touch with, perhaps, even though you have some bittersweet memories of it all? Mm, not really, to be honest. Like, you know, 
2020 was such a difficult year wrestling wise um and i guess it is what it is like when you're on top like you know i was on on tour with a really famous rock star here in germany in 2019 I many times in German TV like and I was with NXT UK so I had like a really amazing 2019 and I had so many friends but then 2020 came you know I lost everything like completely I lost everything and now I have maybe five people from the business I keep in touch with and it's pretty sad um but you know like people like Kai were saying she's not in WWE anymore but I love her and she just visit my family like Masahiro Chow he's my stepdad they were just on an interview so i keep in touch with her you know um and yeah that's about it <laughs> but it's okay you know it's okay absolutely that's so cool and you're in germany i've been to germany before i love it there it's been years but i've been to Berlin, and i had a fantastic time the food the people it's just a really cool place and in recent years germany has kind of also blown up in terms of the wrestling world also and you have mm -hmm. your own promotion. You're an entrepreneur. You're a businesswoman. You know, it's serious. Yeah. So talk yeah. to us more about Sirius because this is a really exciting venture that you're embarking on. Yo, know, a series is going to start everything, you know, like I opened the, the company and I wanted to have my first show in April 2020, but unfortunately pandemic came, um, but I have great visions and uh, you know, like I did like, uh, it's called like a promo um, tournaments. So my wrestlers, like I booked some wrestlers, they had like a bad like a rap battle on the mic so we kept the people entertained with this kind of stuff and the fans loved it so we made 2021 and already 2021 we had one um yeah but we have to wait like i have great visions for my company um people are really excited about it i sold already a lot of tickets and people just wake me to go and i can't wait either like i just like a week ago i i I updated the card, you know, and I said, okay, I want to have this person and this person. And in my head, it's going to be fantastic. And I hope that the people will love my concept. Like, I don't want, you know, we have like Dub XW here in Germany and GWF. They are really amazing when it comes to the talent, like the in-ring talent. They do like five-star matches and it's freaking awesome. Um, but I need to do something different because I cannot be the third promotion, you know, who does something. So my aim is to have like a super entertaining show for the mainstream audience so when people come to my show they don't need to know who is i don't know like kevin owens or Alistair Black. they don't need to know anything like that i have on my show singers and dancers and i have like colorful entrances and it's going to be unique you know so the wrestling is important but my main important thing is the entrance is the show that everyone small and big time like everyone is going to have a great time that's like my aim that sounds really cool and it's interesting that you mentioned that the entertainment aspect because i feel as though that's been a topic of discussion for several years in terms of sports plus entertainment should it be more in terms of wrestling should there be more of a sports aspect versus should there be mm -hmm. more of an entertainment aspect and how to put the two together so from your perspective it sounds that Sirius is really trying to bring in wrestling fans but also entertainment fans people who just like to be entertained am I correct yeah and i want to go a little bit back in time like i grew up with the 80s and 90s wrestlers you know they were all big you know hulk hogan like huge people and i kind of want that too i want to bring that back like i want when there's like a guy coming to my show and watch the show i want him to basically you know pee his pants and then he say like oh i don't want to mess with this guy you know i want to have guys like braun Strowman on the show like you know huge guys who everyone is legit scared of you know like he's he's a cool dude and maybe he will not beat you up but you should not try <laughs> that's like my kind of wrestlers i want to have on my show you know yeah and braun Strowman is a free agent now so True, but I heard that he's really expensive. So maybe he can give me a friendship deal. So I don't know. <laughs> right. We'll just put that into the universe. We got to make that happen. That would be really Absolutely. Cool. That would be great. <laughs> and, you know, speaking of big and from one tall girl to another, I'm five foot ten and I understand you're six foot, six foot one, six foot. Yes. 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 Yeah. Which is I love that. I truly love that. <laughs> and 
I'm very curious to know in terms of your experiences in wrestling, did you ever get blowback for being taller than some of the other female wrestlers? Yeah, I had a really difficult start into the business because when I started wrestling, we were like three girls in Germany and then all Europe, maybe like 10 girls. And they were all so much smaller. And uh, it started all with eye candy. So I was never an eye candy, you know, um, it was super difficult, you know, and I, they wanted to book me, but they said, man, who, who you can wrestle, you know, all these girls are so small and it's going to be boring if you only win, you know, or only, you only dominate the other people. So I had a lot of problems with that. And then they wanted me to fight the boys. Uh, yeah, it was always difficult, you know, but now I have like my home promotion. It's like G, uh, C-O-W, like cow is <laughs> championship of wrestling. Uh, and we do more like, yeah, I'm the big scary girl, but we do more like storyline. We have like a lot of storylines, you know, and somehow we can manage to fit it in. But like WWE or TNA, um, I was always a bodyguard and I didn't really like that. But that that's like people are not really creative and well. Yeah. And do you find that storylines is that's another topic of discussion recently in wrestling storylines and and just making sure that that's something that's infused into shows. Um, a lot of people have been talking about, you know, in their words, the lack of a storyline. From your perspective, do you feel that there needs to be more storylines in wrestling now, especially within the bigger promotions? Um, again, I don't watch WWE at the moment and I don't really watch like any other product. I only see him like the highlights on Twitter or something, but I do believe that storylines are super important. Uh, I only can do like the connection in MMA, like I did mixed martial arts and when I go to a mixed martial arts show, right, uh, I only see the fighters. I have no feeling for them, like no connections to them. So they don't even have entrances at a, you know, like for example, German MMA. You see, is a little bit different now, um, but like the local MMA shows, there's just two fighters fighting each other. I don't know why they're fighting. I don't know what it means to them, and I think it's important. You know, I have at least like a little video. Like even when we go to little independent pro wrestling events, you know, I don't know, like show me something like I need to connect to you. So I cheer for you because otherwise I wouldn't care. So storylines are indeed important. Like, of course, when you go to an independent show, you cannot have like too many complex storylines in the show Then it's get just all wind up. But if it's like one good storyline in the show, you know, like for example, let's do something at the beginning, someone goes out and then maybe challenge someone. And then in the middle of the shows, to, to the challenge or something happened and then the main event happens, you know, something like this. That's like, that catches me and that makes me interesting into the show. Um, but yeah, I think storylines are super important, but they also need to be, you know, to understand for everyone. Like if it's just only the wrestling fans understand, then you cannot have a broad audience, you know? So I think you should have it also like to understand for a mainstream audience. So you cannot make it too complex. Mm, I really like that personally. You know, going back to Germany and the German scene and wrestling, are there any stars that we should be looking out for whose names, you know, they're they're up and coming? Um, I would definitely say Stephanie Mays. She's amazing. Like she's a she's like also like she do a lot of kickboxing. She's like really upcoming star. She's a little tiny girl, but she has like really big power. Um, not from Germany, but from Luxembourg. You should remember Blackwell. He's also like a really up and coming star. Um, but I think like we have wrestling schools here, few wrestling schools, and there are a lot of hidden talent. And Zero Sports Entertainment, for example, my company, I want to keep an eye on the German talent. Like I also only speak German on my shows. We will be on fights, you know, we will be um, worldwide streaming. We will have like an, an American commentator. He's super famous. Soon you will know who he is. He's one of my best friends. And, and yeah, I can't wait to uh, show you um but he will have a hard time because we speak uh, in the promos german the commentator will speak german like and and i as the moderator of the show so he will have a hard time but i think it's important to stand out like wxw and gwf they speak english all 
the time. And I feel a little bit sad for the German fans. Of course, German people speak English. That's not a problem. We learn in school and everything. But I feel like a little bit lost in culture and lost in the language. So that's what I want to, you know, aim for so that you really can say, hey, Sirius is a German promotion and this is Germany all about. Because we have a great tradition. Like we had in Hanover and Schützenplatz, all the, you know, the American came and the Japanese came. They came all to Germany to Schützenplatz to the big tournaments that were like 90 days. And we have our own style it, it's called catch as catch can and we have a lot to offer and you know people like in WWE like Walter Marcel Bartle they already showed these kind of moves and you know submission and transitions we have and I think it's just beautiful like there's American wrestling there's Mexican wrestling you have Japanese wrestling but you also have you know like European wrestling and I want to show it more to the world mm. As an entrepreneur and a businesswoman now in the world of wrestling, what's one thing that you've learned that you had no idea, you know, just coming into wrestling as a wrestler first and foremost, now working behind the scenes, is there something that you've learned that you were like, I had no idea this is how it is behind the scenes? Well, I guess there are like many things. Like now I appreciate promoters way more like I sometimes go to my friend Alex Wonder he's like a German promoter and I said I had no idea like wow um, there's like one thing that sticks out to me but not only me as a promoter but also like a wrestler for example when I was in um, NXT UK that really sticks out like the wrestlers not doing enough promotion like for the companies like it seems that they're like you know they take it for granted that they can work here or there like we have shows every weekend right but I don't see it on their social media I don't see that they do a lot of commercial like when I had my show and it was only like two weeks away from happening actually I was like why is why are the wrestlers not promoting my show? Like why are they not proud to be on my show? You know, so it was so weird for me. And I asked my um, my friend Alex Wonder. I said, like, do you have the same problem, or is it just my show they don't want to promote? He said, no, it's so difficult. Like you even ask him for videos, and the most of them don't deliver. So I thought this is a bit strange because if a promoter asked me, hey Jesse, can you promote my event? Of course, because I'm on it and I want the people see me so of course I promote it you know or with NXT UK you can see on my Instagram timeline I was so proud you know to be a part of it I can remember after I signed the contract and I got like the t-shirt I went to the airport like wearing the NXT UK I, I was like I'm you know like look at me like I'm working for NXT UK I was so proud and I'm looking at the other Instagram accounts and nothing I'm like why so I never ask these people so I don't know the answer maybe someone wants to answer me now but it's <laughs> like it's sad you know <laughs> yeah, exactly. so I wish that uh, the rest has do more promotion for the shows they are on because at the end of the day the promoter like it's not like we only have one weekend like we drive to the show for example when I go to um, Alex Wonder I travel like three hours there I have a match and I go three hours back so that's like one day but the promoter man he's doing like six months of hard work he's talking to the venue he's talking to this and that and invests so much of his own money so he can give me the stage so hello making a little repost like a little tweet on freaking twitter or instagram it's cost nothing for us but it helps the promoter so much you know so that's my thought <laughs> wow and and with the promos with talent kind of shying away from promos this is something that i've heard quite for some long time um, from different parties within the business and even though you stated that you don't really have the answer do you think to some degree that it has to do with the lack of perhaps promo classes at schools or maybe some wrestlers just don't feel comfortable doing promos I don't know what your thoughts on that are yeah of course promos are difficult like I'm not really good at promos either um and I don't mean necessarily like you know taking a camera and talk a promo but I mean just you know take a picture and, and write say I'm at COW that, mm -hmm. that that day um but yeah promos is a different thing yeah it's it's a class for their own and I think you should do like acting classes or something or 
I personally, I'm a big fan of asking someone who can do better. For example, the guy from Luxembourg, I just told you, you have to keep an eye on him. Black will. He's really good at promos. So I asked him, what are you doing? Like, can you give me some advice? And, and he told me something so I can practice at home. Like, it's so easy. Everyone has a phone with a camera, the camera pretty good. So everyone can cut promos, not upload them, but learn. And then I can cut the promo. I can send it to the sky and ask him, you know, like, I. it's so rare that people actually send something to me, like matches or promos or anything, you know, like, it's so rare that people ask me for advice. Maybe I'm not a good person to give advice, but I wish that the young people would seek more, you know, like, they act like they know everything, but they don't. I mean, I had to make so many mistakes in the business, you know. Um, why can you not learn from me, you know? But it's not just for me. I mean, like, for everyone. Like, if you are on a show, go to the veterans. Like, go there and ask, what can I do better? Or can you watch my match, you know, and maybe tell me later what you think. It's important and it's for free. Like, you can ask advice for free. And most of the young people always think, ah, oh, I don't want to bother the experienced wrestler but you don't bother it's the opposite we're so happy that we are still needed <laughs> and we are happy that we can give you our knowledge you know so please ask young people ask for advice <laughs> and going into the promotional aspect which you first started talking about uh, that's really interesting to me as well to hear that in terms of promoting even on just social media seems to be like taking water out of a stone because everyone's on social media and everyone's always promoting themselves. So that's really fascinating that it, at least in your experience and seeing these young wrestlers, you know, building themselves up in these promotions, not really saying, Hey, I'm at this show, come check it out. I, that's really, that's really strange to me, but I guess perhaps it'll change as time goes on. And, and maybe that's also down to, us being in, you know, this time of COVID and just having to deal with it, I guess people might have been burnt out. I don't know if you have any extra thoughts on the whole social media. Yeah, I, I think after after we're all allowed to go again, I think a lot of things will change. Like, look just about cinemas, for example. Cinemas were about to die. I believe as soon as they can open up again, that people will run to the cinemas <laughs> and just you know just want to hang out there you know and i think it will be the same with wrestling i think people will more appreciate it um and people will buy more tickets maybe it will slow down after a while but i think for the beginning we will have a crazy time and i think everyone will have more you know gratefulness about it like i know for sure when i go next to a show i will hug all my wrestling people and say oh thank god i can be here anymore you know and i hopefully will not complain about the pain after the match <laughs> because <laughs> i can be happy that i was in the match you know so yeah i think a lot of people will be more grateful for what we actually had and have yes yes and speaking of the cinema what do you like to do besides wrestling and being this amazing businesswoman in Germany? What are your hobbies? What, what do you get down to over there? Um, well, I, I have no time <laughs> to do <laughs> hobbies. Um, but yeah, I love sleeping. Like that's my hobby. Like if I have a day off, I sleep a long time. Oh uh, no, but I love hiking and exploring like um, where I live around here. We have a lot of castles and a lot of, you know, nature. And I love it here so much. People always ask me, I was like born in Berlin. I, I grown up in Munich, lived in London. Last stop was Tokyo. And now I'm in a little tiny town and everyone is like, why? And I'm like, it's so beautiful here. It's like the most amazing thing. So yeah, that's like, I love to walk around when I have free time. Yes, yes. And you also <laughs> mentioned spirituality and really getting down to your roots and, and really figuring yourself out as well as the world around you. So being someone who's very spiritual, what's one thing uh, or one piece of advice actually that you would give, not just to a wrestler, but just to anyone who is still dealing with these effects of, you know, being in a pandemic, things are opening up at least over here, but do you have any thoughts mm -hmm. about that given your spirituality and, and given that perspective that you can impart to us? I, I do actually, but people who, who are not open to it will think I'm crazy. Um, but I will give you my thought 
what I personally figured out for myself. Mm -hmm. So I figured out for myself that we are all like, you know, you can call it God, but some people don't like the word, but let's call it light. Okay. We are all part of the light. So the light is inside of us and this light wants to have a human experience so that's why we're here and our job is to have as many human experiences as possible that means loving crying laughing um being in dangerous situation um being bored being helpless all of these human experience you can have you need to feel and let it out like for example when you're when you're sad people always say oh don't be sad you know no be sad if you're sad if your heart broken feel it you know let it all out like experience it because that's what we need you know that's what the light wants us you know because we're here of the human experience um we are everything like if you feel lonely don't feel lonely you're not because you're everything and you need to remember that every freaking day and then you will have a much better life you know and about depression for example like sometimes I had depressions too and I wanted to figure out what is it like why do I feel this way and I have this idea which helps me personally so there is it's called the vortex so this is up here what you can be you know like you have so much potential you have so many talents and you can be here but right now you're here And when you're not doing anything, like you're just lazy, you're drinking alcohol and you're doing nothing, you're just wasting your time on the phone, you go backwards. You're not going towards your where you could be. And when you go backwards, you feel depression because you're going away from what you could be. How can you stop feeling so bad? If you start, for example, taking a walk or stop smoking, that's a difficult one, I know. But, you know, just little tiny changes that bring you more towards your everything, you know, that can bring you to a better. Like, I had that when I was so freaking poor, like in England. I had no money. Everything was just crazy. I couldn't do wrestling because no one booked me. And I felt really, 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 really bad. <laughs> then I go to the library. Library was for free. I could just open a book and read. And instantly I felt better. I was nourishing myself with knowledge. And then that's why I went more upwards. I'm still not here. Maybe I will never go here because I don't know. I, I believe it has also something to do with luck. But I'm on my way, you know. And every time you go and be a little bit better than yesterday, you're on a good way. Mm. And where are you now? In that's, your oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, where are you now? Your <laughs> no, I was just saying that's like what I think. Maybe you think it's crazy. It's okay. But that's like what I figured out for myself. Everyone has a different journey. So, but that's what I figured for myself. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I personally, there's a lot of that that I vibe with, you know, and, and everyone, like you said, has their own thoughts on the human experience and, and where mm -hmm. we are in this world. And especially the year and a half that we've all had, um, a lot of people are thinking about their own human experience and where they are in life. And, and either you're going to go forward or you're going to go backwards if that's your choice. Yeah. It's a choice. It's a choice, I feel. So absolutely so for that. And where are you in your human experience now? What, what more can we expect from you as time goes on into the later <laughs> uh, well my my visions are really high like I have a lot of vision visions for myself and I see myself uh, really high and I have something uh, how you say like in a back pocket that soon will be revealed you know I wasn't lazy the last one and a half year uh, I did something amazing in a different uh, way you know like I did the, a movie um, and it's a really big movie like I'm really excited uh, when it's finally coming out and I think after people see that maybe I will get more um, chances to do more you know um, so I'm really excited till that all starts But right now I'm just, you know, I'm here trying, you know, to look as cute as I can <laughs> and go to the gym. Um, I'm tattooing myself all the time and I just have a vision for myself, you know, and I try step by step go forward. Right now I feel caged, like it's insane with a freaking pandemic. I can't wait to be a promoter because that's who I am, you know, um, and yeah, but I'm optimistic. Everything will be all right. Yes, yes. And this movie, oh my goodness, congratulations for that because acting is so freeing and it's just another way to express yourself. 
So can you tell us a little bit about the role that you're playing? I don't know if it's under wraps, if it's, it seems like production is done. <laughs> like, no. Top secret. <laughs> Top <laughs> secret. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us the genre? Is it action adventure, drama, comedy? Mm, little bit of comedy, little bit of action, drama. It's everything. Okay. okay. <laughs> And will we be able to see this? Is it going to be streaming or is it going to be in theaters first and then streaming? It, it will be streaming. It will be on a big streaming platform. Yeah. Right. Excellent. That's amazing. <laughs> so it sounds like acting is something that you've latched on to and really want to do more of as time goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Like my, like my little dream is to be, you know, like we have like um, soap operas here in Germany. That's like a big thing here. And I hope I can be on one of them, you know, or I also love reality TV. Uh, I don't know if you know on Netflix, The Circle. Yes. Uh, I I want to be on it so badly. I applied for the UK one, but they never answered. But I hope they will. <laughs> like, that's like my dream. I love reality TV. So I, I, I'm an entertainer, you know, I want to be a part of that, you know. Excellent. Excellent. What other reality TV shows do you watch? Um, Big Brother, you know, um, then we have, oh, we have so many stuff here. We did, uh, how you call it in the camp where they eat like crazy things, you know, um, exactly. when they go to the jungle. Oh, I'm oh. a celebrity. Get me out of here. <laughs> oh yes yes do you watch the challenge at all because that's my that's one of yeah my i watched them all i would never do it like i don't want to go there but i love to see these people you know it's so fun <laughs> <laughs> well i hope that you make your way onto the circle i would say apply again because you never know sometimes that's just a maybe not right now and not a complete no maybe we'll just go for it again and hopefully we'll see you on one of these shows that would be really that would be really cool. I could see you having your own reality show, just the cameras. Oh, yeah. You do. <laughs> Everyday life. That would be so excellent. But thank you so much, Jazzy. This was really great catching up with you, talking to you about your life and just everything that you've been through. Uh, this is, it's an honor meeting you, talking with you and seeing your journey progressing, not just in wrestling, but just in life in general. So do you have any parting thoughts or things that you want to let your fans know uh, before we no like again I say everything will be all right and uh, it would be an honor if you follow me on my journey on my Instagram I'm most active on there sometimes I'm on Twitter but it's a little bit toxic so you can <laughs> find me on Instagram um, and yeah thank you so much for having me you're absolutely welcome and thank you everyone for watching PWI on YouTube check out the magazine digitally and physically and we will have more video interviews with some of your favorite wrestlers right here on the Pro Wrestling Illustrated YouTube channel stay tuned this is Candace Cordelia signing off bye